Is it just me, or is there a bunch of retro-style MMORPGs hitting the scene? I mean, we got Ashes of Creation on the horizon, Pantheon whenever that decides to come out, Genfinod released recently, and out of nowhere, we got another indie retro nostalgic MMORPG that recently landed called Embers Adrift that mimics the grandfather titles like EverQuest. Formerly known as Saga of Leucemia, Embers Adrift is a retro-style, low-fantasy MMORPG experience. The game touts itself as taking a more realistic approach to its world, having players needing to rely on each other and the knowledge you gain from adventuring to overcome its challenges. The game seemingly dropped out of nowhere, as most people had never even heard of it until recently, since there was never a major advertising campaign for the game. I found some footage online through Nathan Napalm's channel, shouts out to him, and a few Reddit posts, and I was immediately interested. I went to the website, purchased the game, and began playing. The game is $30 on sale at the time of this video. There is also a subscription fee that the game has, so it's buy to play with the first month being free at $10 a month after the free month. I think that's a fair asking price, but either way, let's talk about why you may want to jump in on the fun that is Embers Adrift. The story of Embers Adrift, according to the beginning quests, is that you are some sort of drifter who has stumbled into the region of New Haven. The world has discovered the power of the Ember Rings and that they have begun to shape the world around them, mutating animals, influencing human activity, and imbuing equipment with vast powers are only a few of the mysteries that the Ember holds. Essentially, to survive in the world, you will need to find those who are willing to fight alongside you and harness the power of the Ember so that you can can help protect those who can't fight for themselves. It's an interesting premise that still somewhat keeps the theme of low fantasy, as you can imagine the Ember being less of a magical phenomena and more of a natural earthly one. Once you've created your account, you are then thrown into character creation. Character creation here is pretty standard with nothing special. You have the choice of being a man or a woman, body type from fit to unfit, height, muscle tone, hair color, eye color, skin color, and as well as various hairstyles and markings. As you can probably tell from some of the footage you are seeing here, the game doesn't have the best looking graphics. The textures are pretty low resolution. Some animations in game are stiff or outright unfinished. Serious? Character models look pretty jank, especially in the hair types, and overall, the game has a very dated look. However, it is going for that retro feel, and ultimately, a game's looks in terms of graphics doesn't matter as long as the game is fun. Once you create your look and name, then you choose one of the three starting roles. Striker is the DPS role, Support is your healer, and Defender is your tank. Eventually, once you've reached level 6, you then choose a specialization which further augments your effectiveness in combat, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Once you've chosen your role and log in, you are given a very, very quick tutorial and thrown into the world to discover everything else more or less on your own. This game has very little hand-holding, so get used to teaching yourself the mechanics. It does at least teach you movement, combat, using items and abilities, professions, and crafting, and finally questing. Everything you will need to know to get started in Embers Adrift. Combat in Embers is a pretty basic task target system. Simply click on an enemy you encounter, select your ability, and start auto-attacking. At lower levels, you won't have much to interact with in combat, but once you start rising in levels and choose your specialization, combat really starts to become more intricate. It's not as engaging as, say, World of Warcraft, since there is only eight skills to slot into your hotbar, but there is a small amount of depth to it. Referring back to the specializations, each role has three unique classes to choose from. Striker can advance to Berserker, Brigand, or Warden. Defenders have the choice of Juggernaut, Knight, or Marshal. And finally, Support gets the options of Duelist, Sentinel, or Warlord. Each class learns completely different skills, and in truth, blends the standard three-role triangle. For example, the Sentinel class in the Support tree learns their fair share of healing skills, but they also have the ability to wear heavier armor than their comparative choices, and can even tank in some cases. That's just one example 
example with each tree having similar elements of what I just described. So class choice and customization is definitely a shining feature here. Professions in crafting work probably most similar to World of Warcraft once again. At the start, you choose one gathering profession from the choice of Forester, Prospector, or Hunter. Forester gathers wood and food. Hunter skins animals for their fur and meat. Prospectors mine ores for their minerals and gems. Once you level your first profession to six, you can then choose an additional gathering profession, or you can choose a crafting one. The crafting professions include Weaponsmith, Woodworker, Armor Smith, Provisioner, Outfitter, and Tinkerer. Once you level your first and second choices both to level 12, you can then choose a third and final profession. Your choices and professions can be changed by simply unlearning it in the menu, but doing so will reset your level progress. The same can be done with your class choice, but that also resets your level progress, so be aware of that. In general, each role in crafting and gathering is structured in a way to have the community engage with each other for goods. Each crafter can create something that each player will need, and each gatherer can harvest items each crafter needs. The player-driven economic system here leads to a more community-led experience, which is why something like an auction house doesn't exist. The developers want that community engagement. In addition to leveling up your class and your professions, you will also be collecting better equipment through either previously mentioned crafting methods, questing, or farming boss monsters in dungeons or the open world. Gearing your character can be a little bit of a long process. Crafting pieces of armors or weapons will definitely get you by, especially if you've acquired some of the better recipes through drops, but boss enemies tend to drop much better loot to equip. The trick is that these named enemies typically require a strong party to defeat, and drops from that enemy all have to be rolled for individually, so it's never guaranteed that even when you defeat one, you will actually get anything. More importantly though, it encourages players to group up to overcome these boss creatures together, in the hopes of slowly powering each other up as a group rather than an individual. Questing is another method to find better equipment for your character to wield, as many of the quest rewards give incredibly more powerful pieces of armor and weapons for your trouble. The drawback is that questing in this game can actually be very challenging. Following the theme of older games, Games, quests are never indicated to you with any sort of guide. Instead, you will have to speak to each NPC individually to see if they even offer any quests to you. Even further, each quest will only give you a vague idea of how to continue it through its dialogue and quest descriptions. So if you're the type of person who isn't going to bother reading and paying attention to quest dialogues, it might be best to just ignore them altogether. Dungeon crawling, on the other hand, is probably some of the best fun you'll have in the game. Dungeon Dungeons offer a great way to grind experience as a group of up to six players, as well as a way to get better loot through named bosses within said dungeons. Now you've probably noticed everything I've talked about here is group oriented. Dungeons, bossing, crafting, heck even quests usually require some sort of group to complete. That's because this game isn't really too friendly for solo players. Sure you can get a bit of grinding, crafting, and questing done completely by yourself, but you will will eventually hit a spot where it just becomes too difficult to tackle content alone. The game is best experienced with other players, so solo players will definitely struggle here. But see, that's the whole point of the developer's vision. Things that seem harsh or tedious to complete are made that way on purpose in Embers Adrift. Tasks should feel satisfying to complete, leveling up should feel like a rush of energy to achieve, and killing that tough boss monster for loot should feel invigorating. There are definitely definitely annoying qualities to this though, like death punishment being that you lose your items unless you can get back to your body, and while I would argue modern games have made smaller gameplay elements like this less punishing, for the better of the genre, I can respect the developer's vision of a more hardcore experience. Ultimately, the game reminds me of classic Final Fantasy XI, where I would head to Volcarm Dunes, find a grinding party, and just camp experience for hours leveling up my tunes. This game brings me back to that social experience I had in older titles, and I have to hand it to Embers Adrift for being one of the few titles released in recent years to actually make me feel like I belonged in an online community where I could make friends. Anyways, let's start wrapping this video up and get to my overall thoughts on Embers Adrift. Embers Adrift harkens back to the classic group-based MMORPG 
RPG style gameplay, requiring players to work together in most content to overcome its challenges. Meaning this game is ultimately a more social experience, so if you like a more group based MMO, EA is right up your alley. In addition to the game's more social aspects, there is a major emphasis on discovery and taking your time with content. This leads into the questing experience in EA. Questing is actually a lot better here because it's a bit more challenging than just kill X, collect Y. Now don't get me wrong, it's still largely fetch quests to an extent, but there is at least more thought to them than just the copy pasta you usually see in other games, especially since some of your dialogue choices can actually affect certain quests. The game has a great way of making loot and crafting feel incredibly important since it's largely how you will be making your character more powerful. It's not as easy as just finding the next town and buying equipment off a vendor. No, you will have to work to make your character stronger. Finally, the game has a very active community, especially in Discord, with the devs having a roadmap of content to come, so expect more from the game in the future. For all the praise I can give the game, there is a fair share of drawbacks. For one, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the game's graphics and animations can use some work. I understand it's going for a more retro feel, but a bit of polish would go a long way, especially since there are certain game areas that look breathtaking while others just feel unfinished. I personally like the game's hardcore gameplay, but I can understand that it's not for everyone, especially if you are coming from a more modern background. Those that also like a more solo gameplay experience, or at least the options to play solo, may want to steer clear of this game as well. You can definitely get things accomplished as a solo player, but the game definitely pushes you to group up with friends. While I understand that the price tag for the game currently is to avoid microtransactions, pay to win, and to fund the development of the game, I can't help but feel that we are playing an early access title. I commend the developers for bringing out a largely finished product, but I do think a trial for new players to at least be able to dip their toes into the game would go a long way. For the PvPers watching the video wondering why I haven't covered PvP, well, it's because there is no PvP in this game. The developers have stated that this is a large largely PvE focused experience, so PvPers will have to look elsewhere to get their fix. Well, those are my thoughts on Embers Adrift. Are you playing EA right now, or are you on the fence? Hopefully this video helped you make a decision. If it did, click that subscribe button and like the video to rocket it into the algorithm for me. Comment down below your thoughts on Embers Adrift, follow my social media in the description below, and I will see you in the next video.